Are you ready for the most epic adventure ever? Next summer, Group VBS is taking kids on a ride they'll never forget. Get on board the Rocky Railway. Your church will be on track at Sing and Play Express. Get ready for high energy fun at Locomotion Games. Experience impactful Bible lessons and Bible adventures. You'll have amazing discoveries at Imagination Station. Take a glimpse into the world of five awesome kids who learn that Jesus' power pulls us through. The best part of summer is full steam ahead at Rocky Railway. Welcome back for day three of Vacation Bible School, Rocky Railway. I am your conductor, Conductor Ripley. So happy to see all of you once again, and I'm really happy that you can see me. Tonight is going to be so fantastic. So you want to make sure that you have your red bags ready to go. And in that red bag, you'll have everything you need for this evening, including a delicious cookie snack. And these cookies look like, hmm, I may eat them a little bit later because being a train conductor is hard work. Well, again, tonight's going to be absolutely fantastic. And to get us kicked off, we are going to sing our theme song for this week. Your power will pull us through. So let's get started. We trust, we trust, we trust in you, Jesus, you're all, you're all, you're all that we need, you Trusting in you, we're trusting in you. You give us hope and life that's forever. You make us bold and we stand together. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you, we're trusting in you. We're off on this journey, there's no looking back. With Jesus to lead us, we're on the right track. Oh, 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 oh. Wide open spaces for wide open eyes. We're looking ahead for the next big surprise. Oh, 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 oh. We trust, we trust, we trust in you.
Faith and 
Aren't those songs fantastic? I absolutely love them, especially that first one. I can't wait to sing it tomorrow with all of you here at the church. It's going to be really fantastic, and I'm so looking forward to it. Right now, I can barely contain how excited I am. We are going to meet our Bible buddy of the day. And it's today's is just, oh my gosh, it's my favorite one. This is Sierra the Mountain Lion, and she is going to teach us how Jesus' power helps us to be bold. Let's meet her. Is everyone on board for another exciting day? I'm roaring to go. My name is Sierra, and I'm a mountain lion. Now, you might think lions only belong in Africa, but North America has their lions, too. My friends and I go by other names like pumas, panthers, catamounts, and cougars. That's because I live all over the western part of the globe, and different people have different names for me. In fact, Aside from humans, no other mammal covers such a large range of territory. I am one cool cat, aren't I? My tawny fur doesn't start out like this. As a baby, I had spots. I think God gave me those so I'd blend in with the tall grass where my mother hid me. After my brothers and sisters and I were old enough to hunt, we left our pride and went out on our own. Most of the time, I'm pretty quiet. After all, if I'm making a lot of noise, it's gonna be hard for me to sneak up on my lunch. Shh, be quiet. A girl's gotta eat. Of course, there are times when I need to make a big, bold noise. Even though I look a lot like a lion, I don't roar. I've got a pretty intimidating scream, though. <coughs> Isn't that the cat's meow? When I need to catch a meal, I have to move fast. I'm glad God gave me such powerful legs to run, jump, and pounce. Without those mighty muscles, I'd go hungry. God made my legs so powerful Mountain lions can jump up to 18 feet high and 40 feet long. That'd be like me jumping on top of your house. God created me with muscles to leap and pounce. Sometimes you need to boldly leap or pounce on an opportunity. Maybe it's hard to be bold when you need to make a new friend. Tell the truth or boldly talk about Jesus. The Bible has this powerful promise for you. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. You can trust that Jesus' power will give you the strength you need to be bold. Jesus is right with you, cheering you on all the way. Pounce on the opportunity. Jesus' power helps us be bold. Trust Jesus. Hi, I'm Peter. I got to be one of Jesus' disciples. And man, I got to hear Jesus teach. I got to go and see him do all kinds of miracles. I've got a ton of really cool stories. But one of my favorite stories of all is about a time that Jesus helped me to be bold. I mean, really, really bold. It all happened uh, one day when my friend John, John was another disciple, we were walking by the temple. And as we were walking, we saw this guy on the ground. And this poor guy couldn't walk. And he looked up at us and he asked us if we had any money we could give him. Well, we didn't have any money. So I said, well, I don't have any money, but I can give you something way, way better. Because I don't know why, but I was just feeling really bold. I think it was Jesus helping me to feel bold. And so I said, I can give you something better than money. And so you know what I did is I just kind of reached out to him and I said, stand up 
and walk. And you know what he did? That guy, he stood up and he started walking. And then he started running. And then he started jumping up and down. And then he started leaping all over the place. And we were all so, so excited for him because he was healed. And it was really, really exciting. And I told him, I said, you, you are healed because you believed in Jesus. Because you had faith in Jesus, you got healed. And he was just so excited. And then this big crowd of people from around the temple saw him running around and jumping. And we were all happy and cheering. And so this big crowd gathered. And you know what? I started getting bold again. And I looked at this crowd and I said, hey, do you see this guy? He's walking. And I didn't do it. I didn't heal him. He was healed by the power of Jesus. I thought that was kind of bold. But then I got even bolder. And you know what I did? I looked at all the people, I looked at this big crowd, and I said, I've got some hard things that you need to hear. And I started telling him about how Jesus came, and he came for us, and he just wanted to love us. And all those people, they rejected him, and they didn't love him, and they didn't start following him. And in fact, they kind of caused Jesus to be led to the cross and, and to be killed. And I don't know if they wanted to hear it, but... I knew that they needed to hear this. And even more importantly, they needed to hear that even though that happened, Jesus still loved them and they could still follow him. All they had to do was tell Jesus that they were sorry for all the bad things that they wanted that they had done and to start following him and that they could have that same faith and that same power that the man who's now walking had in 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 their life. And I was feeling really bold and I looked around and you know what? Another crowd started forming, but this crowd was not as much fun as the first crowd because this new crowd, it was a crowd of guards from the temple who would come out to see what was going on and why were all these people here and why were people talking about Jesus? Because they didn't always like that then. And so the guards grabbed me and John and they took us in front of the all the, the religious leaders, and these were all kind of old, kind of cranky guys, and they weren't happy that we were talking about Jesus because they didn't believe then that Jesus was the Son of God, and they weren't really happy that we were talking about Jesus and trying to get other people to know and understand Jesus. And so they kind of got together, and I saw them arguing, and they were scratching their beards and talking back and forth, and they couldn't figure out what to do with us because John and I, we were a little bit scared, but we were standing up strong and we were bold because Jesus gave us the power to be bold. And so they said, well, we don't know what to do with you yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to send you to jail. And they took John and I and they threw us in jail and we had to spend the night in jail. Well, that was okay because you know what happened the next day? The next day, there was this big crowd of people. And you know what happened? 5,000 people heard us preaching about Jesus, and 5,000 people started following Jesus. They made a decision to follow Jesus, and right? And it was so exciting, all because we were bold for Jesus. And John and I were really excited that all these people now were going to follow Jesus. But the religious leaders... They were not happy with us, and so they gathered up together again, and they started arguing back and forth because they still didn't know what to do with us. And so finally, they came to John and I, who were still feeling pretty bold, and they said, all right, well, we're going to let you go, uh, but you need to get out of here, and you need to stop preaching and talking about Jesus and talking in Jesus' name. And we said, well... We'll do that first part where we go home, but we're not doing the second part. And we took off and we went back to our house. And when we got home, we got all of our friends together, all of the other Christians in our area. And we told them everything that happened. We told them about the man who couldn't walk, but now he could. And we talked about how we were bold. And we talked about how the religious leaders were not happy with us and how they threw us in jail. But 
we weren't afraid because we knew Jesus was with us. And how the next day, there was all these people that heard about Jesus. And they didn't, not only heard about Jesus, but they decided to follow Jesus. And it was so, so exciting. And I was excited. And John was excited. And all the other friends were super excited. And so we all got together and we prayed right then and there, all together, that we could continue being bold. In fact, we even asked for more boldness so that we could tell everybody, the whole world, about Jesus. It was so fun and it was so exciting because Jesus had given us the power to be bold. It was fantastic. Here's the thing. One of the reasons that the religious leaders were so cranky with us is they couldn't understand how we could be so bold. They couldn't understand how we could teach and preach and we could stand and tell people about Jesus because we didn't have any fancy training. I'm a fisherman. I never went to fancy schools. I never learned how to do fancy speaking. All I know is that Jesus gave me the power to be bold and to tell other people about him. And it was really exciting. So here's what I want you to think about from my story. Sometimes you might feel kind of awkward or maybe kind of shy about sharing about Jesus, about telling people um, all about Jesus and maybe what he's done for you or maybe what um, Jesus can do for other people that you know that just really need to know him. Well, sometimes maybe you'll feel kind of afraid, maybe that people are going to laugh at you or maybe that you're going to get in trouble. Believe me, I know about that. I've got a story about that, that you should totally ask somebody uh, to tell you the story about the time that Peter, like, totally got afraid about telling Jesus, right? But that's not me anymore, because I know that Jesus will give me the strength to be bold. So, if, um, if you need to be bold, you just need to know that Jesus will always be with you. You don't have to do those things alone. When we were preaching to all those people, we weren't doing it by ourselves. Jesus was right there with us the whole time. So if you ask him, just know that Jesus will give you his power to be bold, right? To act bold, to speak bold, right? To do great things in his name, right? You just need to know, friends, that you are not alone. So be bold. Bye, guys. Are you looking? I'm looking. Man, look way out there. Look up in those mountains. Can wow. you see all those mountains? Yes. Wonder what's up in all those mountains. Maybe wow. we should go do some exploring. Yes. You know, we might even run across some of those buddies that we've had. Those buddy videos. Don't you love those buddy videos? I love Ramsey. He's cool. And what, and what about, about Ramsey? What about Ramsey? Yeah, Ramsey's awesome. He taught us how to do hard things. And Jesus helps us, gives us the power to do hard things. So friends, in our God sighting today, is there something hard that you had to do this week that you relied on God to give you the strength? You need to thank God for being present with you. That's what a God sighting That's is. Right. It's acknowledging God. God in everything, even the hard stuff. What about Ava? Ava was so cool because Ava reminds us the power that Jesus gives us for what? Gives us for hope. Did you see any hope the last couple days? That hope is the thing that connects us to what Jesus is doing. Jesus shows up and helps encourage us, us to give others hope. And so I hope that you were able to soar like a, the red hawk and experience hope. But then there was today. Today, Jesus' power helps us be bold. Sierra. Sierra. Now, I think I see her out there. Oh, she might be in there. Really look, oh, no. she's out there. there. So be bold. Be Friends, bold. did you see God somewhere today in your day that helped you be bold? Or will you be looking for it tomorrow? If you have found a place that you saw God where you were bold or where you helped somebody or where you had hope, write it in the chat so we know <laughs> something could have happened today that you can share. Hopefully you're using your sticky notes and writing those down because even though Vacation Bible School 
isn't going to be online. We're going to see you tomorrow, and we can't wait to see you tomorrow. But we want you to have that God-focused view that you're always looking for God in everything. That is what a God sighting is all about. So I'm so excited, I'm really excited. that we have our bracelets to help us remember. But even if I don't have my bracelet, or even if you don't have your glasses, or I don't have my glasses. Or you don't have a good friend that can remind you. We can see God in everything. When we open our heart, we can open our eyes to see God. And then we can share him with everyone else. So friends, be on the lookout. Because God is everywhere. imagination station. I'm so glad to see you here. I can't even imagine all the discoveries we'll make today, but you know what comes first, right? I just have to ask, did you bring your imagination today? Uh-oh, looks like some of you forgot again, and we're going to need a bunch of imagination today. That's why I had a chat with my friend Sierra. You've met Sierra, haven't you? Sierra the mountain lion? Well, Sierra told me something amazing about herself and her mountain lion friends. Mountain lions like Sierra can leap up to 15 feet in the air. That's higher than most ceilings. Let's see if we can do that. Everybody hop up. And on the count of three, let's see how high we can jump. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, well, I don't think any of us jumped as high as 15 feet. Let's try one more time. Here we go. One, two, three. That was fun, but I don't think we'll ever be able to match Sierra without a trampoline, that is. Sierra and her mountain lion friends are so cool. Which do you think is stronger in a mountain lion? Do they have a stronger sense of smell? or a stronger sense of hearing. Think about your answer. Ready? Okay, let's get that drum roll going so I can reveal the amazing answer. And the answer is, mountain lions have a weak sense of smell, 
but they have an extremely sensitive and powerful sense of hearing. Imagine that. Speaking of power, today we're discovering that Jesus' power helps us be bold. Trust Jesus. Sometimes we may not feel very bold, especially when it comes to sharing our faith in Jesus. You've probably heard the phrase, practice makes perfect, right? Well, we'll never be perfect, but practice can help us be bold. It's kind of like this. You take one little step, like praying before lunch at school. Maybe someone asks you why you do that. So you take the next little step and say, you're thanking God for your food. Then maybe you take another little step. Say that you're really thankful to God for sending Jesus and so on and so on and so on. Each bold step makes the next step a little easier. It's a matter of momentum. Let me show you what I mean. Hmm, this chain by itself isn't very bold. It just sits in the bucket. That's kind of like our lives without Jesus. We can't do a whole lot on our own, just like this chain can't do anything on its own. But when we have Jesus in our lives, his power helps us. Jesus' power helps us be bold. Trust Jesus. Now, watch what happens when we add the unexpected power of momentum to the chain. Wow, did you see that? The power of momentum made the chain boldly jump out of the bucket. Wow, when we have Jesus in our lives, he can help us be bolder than we ever thought possible. Now it's time to introduce today's sciency fun gizmo. Behold, the bold blaster. Let's see what it can do. Well, that was kind of a dud. Let's try again. Hmm, this bold blaster sure isn't very bold. Something must be missing. I'm gonna add the power pack. That should help the bold blaster be bold. Let's see what happens. Put your arm out totally level and... Wow! All right, now it's your turn to try it. Pull out your bold blaster kit and lay it out. You should have two pieces, the green tube, and the green straw with the red rubber ball. To assemble, hold the red rubber ball and place the green tube over the straw. To drop, hold your arm out straight and level. Wow, now it's your turn to try out your bold blaster. Does it matter which way you attach the power pack? Can you get your bold blaster to jump as high as Sierra the mountain lion? When you play with your bold blaster, remember, with Jesus, our boldness can reach new heights. Jesus' power helps us be bold. Trust Jesus. Take a few minutes to play with your bold blaster. And when it's time to come back, you'll hear the train whistle. Have fun.
believe it or not, we've come to the end of our time at Imagination Station. Take your bold blaster and put it inside of a baggie so you don't lose any of the pieces. If you have a Try This at Home sticker, it will help you to remember today's point, that Jesus' power helps us be bold. Trust Jesus. All right, well, we will see you back here next time at Imagination Station. <laughs>
I got the power from God to show them that they matter. Jesus' power helps us be bold. Hey, Noah, did we get, like, everything out of the car? Um, we have the grand finale today. What? Did we get everything out of the car, do you think? We have, let's see, our, our camping chairs. Um, you brought a ball. Um, I brought blankets that we can sit on a, um, a bat. I, I'm not quite sure why we brought the bat. Um, do you think we'll need the pillow? No. You don't I, think so? No. I, but I sort of want to be comfy. No. No? Okay. Um... I don't know if we need the umbrella. What do you think? No. No? No. Oh, that's right. They were going to be providing pop-up cam canopies, right? No. Yes, they are. No. Okay. Well, <laughs> they are. We are. Okay, so, <laughs> friends, we are so excited you guys are coming tomorrow night, and you can leave your umbrellas at home because we will have a canopy pop-up for you. You can leave your pillows at home because you really don't need them. But just bring maybe like a blanket or a camping chair. And the other thing that we really want you to bring is our community service supplies. So I know school's starting really, really soon and we've been picking up a few supplies. And so I wanted to just remind you, maybe grab some paper and also a notebook. And, oh, I love glue. Don't you love glue? No. Oh, yes. So we love glue in our home, and we have so much creativity to do. But make sure you guys grab your new supplies. Bring them with you tomorrow night for our grand finale so we can partner with Grace is the Key. Because we really want to come alongside of them and sponsor a night. So grab your school supplies or just simply bring some cash, and we'll put it in the jar, and we're going to be able to sponsor a night. So we will see you guys tomorrow. All you have to do is just bring yourself, bring something to sit on. We're providing dinner, and we're providing that canopy pop-up. Well, we'll see you guys tomorrow with all your school supplies. Bye. Well, thank you very much, Miss Susan. We appreciated hearing all the things that we're going to be doing tomorrow. I, for one, am very much looking forward to everything staying exactly on schedule. Oh, and speaking of staying on schedule, let's just take a moment and think about all the things we've done this evening. Well, today's Bible point came to us from our new friend, Sierra the Mountain Lion. And she reminds us how Jesus' power helps us be, that's right, bold. Great job. I could hear you from here. Those are some good voices. Tonight's Bible verse comes from the book of, oh, what does it come from? The book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah is a book in the Old Testament, and it, it, it won't be a problem to try to find it. You just pick up your Bible and look for the book of Isaiah, and you will find it. Isaiah 40, verse 29, he gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Who do you think they're talking about there? That's right, they're talking about God. God's the one who gives strength, or power to the weak and strength to to the powerless. Wonderful, wonderful job. We also heard from, uh, from, a, from a real life character, Peter, who, who actually knew Jesus and walked around with him and learned directly from him. And we learned, uh, he, he shared with us that fantastic story about how Jesus gave him the power to be bold. And even though, even though he got in trouble for it, he kept on doing the right thing because Jesus' power helped him to be bold. That is pretty amazing. Well, kids and grown-ups, one of the things I would like you to do tonight, just briefly, 
Uh, if you have this book with you, Tracking with Jesus Bible Book, go ahead and turn to page 20. All right? You have your book. You're sharing with brothers and sisters. Everyone's got their own book. You're thinking book, book, what's a book? You know what it is. Okay, on page 20. Do you want to? Do you want to sing in a rock band? Do you want to sing in a rock band? I would like to sing in a rock band. That sounds like, that sounds like wonderful fun to me. If I was in a rock band, what would the name of my band be? Hmm. The Rocky Railways. That's probably exactly the name of my rock band. Great. Do you want to write a book? Ooh, that sounds like it would be tremendous fun. Maybe a little bit of hard work, but hard work is usually the most fun kind of work. Do you want to drive a bulldozer? I would be a little bit nervous to drive a bulldozer. Do you want to train a dog? That sounds like fun. If you could train a dog, what would you train a dog to do? Would you train your dog to sit? Would you train your dog to shake? Would you train your dog to do math problems? If I could train a dog to do anything, I would train a dog to do math problems because then that dog could do my math homework for me. And you have a dog that could do math. That's amazing. Let's see, what else do you wanna do? Do you wanna play quarterback? Hmm, do you wanna play quarterback or do you wanna do something else? Do you want to fly an airplane? It doesn't say fly in an airplane, it says fly an airplane. I think rather than fly an airplane, I'd rather drive a train personal preference. Would you like to perform surgery? Good heavens. That sounds terribly complicated. I bet you have to go to school for a long time and get really good grades if you want to perform surgery. Or would you like to preach a sermon in church? Hmm. I know a couple people who do like to preach sermons in church. Maybe the next time we get to be all together back at church again, you could ask Pastor Tim, Pastor Tim, do you like to preach sermons in church? I bet he'll say yes. You'll have to let me know when we get back to church and you see him and ask him that, you tell me what he says. In fact, if I see him, I might ask him myself. Well, friends, our time is growing, is, is growing, uh, it's coming to an end. I don't know what it's growing into. I don't know why I said that. It's coming to an end. Everyone makes mistakes sometimes, even Conductor Ripley, and that was my one for today. Before we close out tonight, we are going to sing our theme song, Your Power Pulls Us Through, one more time. So stretch your arms out in front of you and take a deep breath and stretch your lungs, because here we go. Trust in you, Jesus, you're all, you're all, you're all that we need. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you, we're trusting in you. You give us hope and life that's forever. You make us bold and we stand together. journey there's no looking back with jesus to lead us we're on the right track oh, 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 oh. wide open spaces with wide open eyes we're looking ahead for the next big surprise oh, oh, oh.
I never get tired of that song. I absolutely love it, and I'm looking forward to singing it tomorrow with all of you. And speaking of tomorrow, we're going to have a fantastic time. We're each family. We're going to get our own special pizza, so so we're, we're we're taking care of ourselves that way and making sure there aren't any germs that spread around. We're all going to be appropriately socially distant and keeping things on track that way. So be sure you bring your singing voices your excitement and your masks, and we will have a really, really fantastic time. So let's close out our evening with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you so much for these last three nights of Vacation Bible School. We thank you for the lessons that you've taught us. We thank you for the crafts that we've gotten to do and the activities and the imagination station. We thank you for your servants who came and taught us during the, the Bible adventure section. Uh, we thank you for just the, the real-life heroes that, that teach us amazing lessons and all that we can, we can learn from them. And Lord, we thank you for the Bible verses that, that we can memorize to know you better and to remember to, to love each other, to be bold, and to, to, to just just draw closer to you, and to know your character every day. Lord, I ask again that you would keep us all safe and healthy, and that you would bring us close to you in all things. Give us lots of chances to serve you and to love others. We pray this in your wonderful name. Amen. Well, we have arrived at our station, and I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great and blessed night. Good night.